Hi there, I'm Kim Weber with the Gimpy Gourmet. Today we're going to be cooking an eye of the round roast. The eye of the round roast is a cut of meat that's about this long and it comes between the top round sirloin and the bottom round sirloin and it's about this long and you can usually cut it in half and have plenty and have actually two roasts out of it. It's pretty economical. Um, this method that we're using, which is salt encrusting, means there's no waste. But there's also very little fat on an eye of the round roast, and it's a perfect vehicle for using it in several different preparations after you use it, you know, the first time. One of the things that I like about this is by cooking it in a cast iron vessel which is this is a small Dutch oven and you cover it with salt you have very little to do with it other than every you know like after 45 minutes start taking its temperature and we use a digital instant read thermometer just be sure you have the digital thermometer good kosher salt and a good Dutch oven you know a covered heavy bottomed dish and this may be a little hard to get out of the oven for some people but we're going to show you some workarounds on that so with that said let's go ahead and see how we get going on the eye of the round roast the roast we'll be preparing today weighs about two pounds we purchased it at our local wholesale grocery store packaged with two pieces of roast one two pounds and one a little over three pounds. We froze both pieces after vacuum packaging them separately. The day before we planned to serve the roast, we took the two pound roast out of the freezer and placed it in the refrigerator to thaw. Around two o'clock, we took it out of the refrigerator and placed it in a bowl in a sink to bring it back to room temperature. By the time we were ready to prepare it for dinner, it was thawed and at room temperature. First, we used several spices and spice blends we have to create a rub for the roast. You can do this to your own taste. If you just want salt and pepper, just do salt and pepper. We then sprayed coconut oil on the roast to make the spices stick to the roast before we patted the spices on. We also sprayed the inside of the Dutch oven with the coconut oil to make the cleanup easier later. Here's a tip for mobility challenge folks. Instead of assembling all this and trying to transport it to the oven, place the empty Dutch oven on the oven rack and then begin assembly. First, pour in enough kosher salt so the roast will be completely resting on salt and won't be touching the pan. Then add the roast. Then cover completely with kosher salt. Cover the pan. Close the oven and set the temperature at 225 degrees. Cooking times are based on the weight of your roast. To cook the roast to your desired temperature, we follow the guidelines we Google on the internet. That way we don't have to remember them. For instance, one site recommends that for two to two and a half pound roast at 225 degrees, cook for one and a quarter hours. When you're within 15 minutes of your projected roasting time, start checking your roast temperature with the thermometer. We use an instant read. Be sure to check both the thick end and the smaller end. 
These rusks cook more quickly towards the end of their cooking time, so check the temperature frequently when you think you are nearing the correct doneness. Instead of trying to lift the Dutch oven from the oven to the stove, take off the lid and use a meat fork to move only the roast from the Dutch oven to your cutting board on top of the stove. Let the roast stand for at least 10 minutes before cutting. It will still be cooking while it's resting. Notice that we have a cutting board positioned on top of a four line cooking sheet. Even though our cutting board has a channel to catch juices, we found this method really helps contain cooking juices and makes cleanup much easier. Slice the roast using a corded electric knife. This is important. An electric knife takes much less effort to operate than trying to cut with a regular knife. Using a corded electric knife ensures you have a robust a cutting tool on the last slice as you do on the first. You are able to cut more precisely making thinner slices with an electric knife. On the first night, we served our roast with peas and mashed potatoes. The next day, the leftover hunk of chilled beef is much easier to slice with a corded electric knife. I recommend you slice only as much as you are planning to use each time to keep the remaining beef from drying out. We had good old roast beef sandwiches for lunch the next day. And a few days later, we made a gluten-free pho with rice ramen noodles. We'll be posting that recipe soon. We also made Philly cheesesteak using our George Foreman grill as a flat top. We had plenty left over to cube and put into vegetable soup, which we enjoyed for dinner, then froze the leftovers. Hope that you enjoyed that. It's a really easy method and one that you can use probably for any other cuts of meat. I was thinking some salt and crusted chicken. I've seen it done with fish, but we'll figure something out and we'll show it to you here on the Kimpy Gourmet. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. We'd love for you to subscribe so that you can get a notification when we're going to have a new video up. And as Warren Zevon said, be sure to enjoy every sandwich. It comes back to you many fold. Just be true, and all that sweet stuff comes back to you. Be the apple of somebody's eye.